Now, if we look at the second text of the 2015 reading comprehension paper, we can see that we have a non-chronological report about guide dogs. So we have information organised under the subheadings what guide dogs do, guide dogs and their owners, how guide dogs are trained, work and play, did you know, and play your part. So let's have a look at the first question in this section. Question 13. Look at the section headed what guide dogs do. Find and copy the word or group of words that shows how much difference a guide dog can make to someone. So what we want to do for find and copy questions is to read the whole section and underline anything that we think might show how much difference a guide dog can make and then we can have a look at what we've underlined and choose the most likely answer. What guide dogs do? Guide dogs help people who are blind or visually impaired move around safely and often transform their lives. They are usually allowed anywhere that the public can go, even where other dogs aren't allowed. In order to help their owner, guide dogs must know how to keep a steady pace, stop at all curbs, recognise and avoid obstacles, stop at the bottom and top of stairs, lie quietly when their owner is sitting down, help their owner to board public transport, obey spoken commands, ignore distractions such as other animals and people. So you can see that as I was reading, I underlined any words or phrases that show that guide dogs make a difference. And if we look at the question carefully, we know that we need a word or group of words that shows how much difference a guide dog can make to someone. Not how they make a difference, but how much difference they can make. So let's have a look at what we underlined and see which is the best answer to the question. We have help people. Now that shows that they do something, that they do help, they make a difference, but there might be better options. So let's look at our others. We have the word safely or move around safely, but that's more showing how they make a difference, not how much difference they make. I think transform their lives is our best option. Because if guide dogs transform their lives, that means they completely change their lives. To transform something is to completely change it. Allowed anywhere, again, isn't going to be our answer because that's showing how they make a difference, not how much difference they make, not how important they are to the lives of their owners. And help their owner is similar to help people. It shows that they do something, but it doesn't show the effect or the full effect of their impact. And again, these bullet points are all about what they do to make a difference, but not showing how much difference they make. So for this question, we need to find and copy the word transform. Or we could copy a group of words, so we could write and often transform or transform their lives. Now lots of children wrote help for this question, but help is not the answer because the word help doesn't show how much difference they make. So you can help someone and it might only make a small difference or it might make a big difference, but the word that shows that they definitely make a big difference is the word transform. Question 14. According to the text, which of the following do guide dogs have to learn how to do? Tick 2. Obey a whistle, stop at all curbs, obey spoken commands, recognise the colour green, walk very slowly. And we need to tick 2 of these options. Now if we look back to the text, we have an introduction here. In order to help their owner, guide dogs must know how to... And then we have stop at all curbs and obey spoken commands written in the bullet points underneath. So our answer to this question, the two that we need to tick 
are stop at all curbs and obey spoken commands. We have these exact words in the text. Question 15. Look at the section headed Guide Dogs and Their Owners. Why are italics used for the word disobey? Tick 1. Because it's a word that people don't know. To show that dogs should do as they are told. It's the opposite of what you would expect. Or because it's explained in a glossary. So let's find the section Guide Dogs and Their Owners. Guide dogs must also know not to obey any commands that would put their owner in danger. This is called selective disobedience and is perhaps the most amazing thing about guide dogs. They know when to obey their owner and when they should disobey to keep their owner safe. So we need to know why the word disobey is in italics, so in a different style of writing. Now the prefix dis means not, so disobey means not obey. And that should be clear because here we're told guide dogs must also know not to obey. But if we look at what was written in the earlier section, this was all about how guide dogs should obey their owners. How, for example, they should obey spoken commands. So the reason why the word disobey is in italics is to emphasise it because it's not something that we would expect. We would expect guide dogs to have to obey their owners all of the time. But in this paragraph, we're told that guide dogs must also know not to obey. So here we need to tick it's the opposite of what you would expect. You would expect guide dogs to always have to obey their owners but in this paragraph or in this section, we're told that they need to, to disobey sometimes as well. Question 16. Look at the section headed Guide Dogs and Their Owners. Why is it important that guide dogs demonstrate selective disobedience? Now, we might not know what selective disobedience is, but in the text it will tell us or give us a clue. And we want to know why selective disobedience is important. So we can't just explain or define what selective disobedience is. We need to explain why it matters, why it is important. So in the section, we're told guide dogs must also know not to obey any command that would put their owner in danger. This is called selective disobedience. So, we know that selective disobedience is not obeying commands. And the reason why dogs use selective disobedience is because they must not obey any commands that would put their owner in danger. So, the reason why dogs use selective disobedience is to keep their owner safe or out of danger. If we read on, we have selective disobedience is extremely important at road crossings, where the owner and dog must work very closely together to cross safely. When they reach the curb, the dog stops and signals to the owner that they have reached a crossing. Dogs cannot recognise the colour of traffic lights, so the owner must decide when it is safe to cross the road. The owner listens to the flow of traffic to judge when the light has changed and then gives the command forward. If there is no danger, the dog crosses the road. If there are cars coming, the dog waits until they pass and then crosses. So again, the reason why selective disobedience is extremely important at road crossings is to keep the owner safe. If there is no danger, the dog will cross, but if there is danger, if there are cars coming, the dog will wait. So, to answer this question correctly, we need to show understanding that guide dogs should demonstrate selective disobedience when they need to keep their owner safe. So we could write, so their owners aren't in danger. Or, because the owner might think it's safe to cross, but the dog must make sure. Or, because the guide dog is aware of dangers the owner can't see. And for this question, we also accept reference to the owner being wrong. So we could write because the owner might get something wrong. 
Question 17. The owner is like the navigator on an aircraft who must know how to get from one place to another, and the dog is the pilot who gets them there safely. What does this comparison tell you about the relationship between the owner and the guide dog? Tick 1. The dog decides where the owner wants to go. The dog relies on the owner to avoid the obstacles. The owner and the dog work together as a team. Or the owner keeps the dog safe on the journey. So let's read the full paragraph that contains this quotation. The guide dog doesn't know where they are going, so it must follow the owner's instructions. The owner can't see obstacles, so the guide dog must help the owner to avoid them. The owner is like the navigator on an aircraft who must know how to get from one place to another, and the dog is the pilot who gets them there safely. So the guide dog needs the owner because the guide dog doesn't know where they are going, and the owner needs the guide dog because the owner can't see obstacles. So that means the owner and dog work together as a team, with the owner deciding and telling the dog where they need to go, and the dog avoiding obstacles to protect the owner from danger. Now if we look at our other options, we can rule them out. The dog decides where the owner wants to go is clearly wrong. The dog doesn't decide where they're going or where the owner wants to go. It's the owner that decides where they want to go and the dog that helps to get them there. The dog relies on the owner to avoid the obstacles is the wrong way round. It's the owner that relies on the dog. It's not the owner helping the dog to avoid obstacles. It's the dog helping the owner. And the owner keeps the dog safe on the journey is the wrong way round as well. We know that the dog helps to keep the owner safe because the dog can avoid obstacles or protect the owner from dangers. So we need to tick the owner and the dog work together as a team. Question 18. Look at the paragraph beginning when it is 8 weeks old. Find and copy one word that suggests that training a guide dog is a long process. So we need one word that tells us that training a guide dog takes a long time. So we can find the paragraph beginning when it is 8 weeks old in the text. That's this paragraph here. But as we haven't read the paragraph above, let's read that first, and then we can look for words in this paragraph which show that training a guide dog is a long process. Not all dogs are suited to the life of a guide dog. Puppies born to be guide dogs have to be intelligent and good-natured. It is important that they aren't nervous of crowds or frightened by sudden noises. When it is eight weeks old, the puppy sets out on its journey to become a life-changing guide dog. It goes to live with a volunteer puppy walker who teaches the pup to follow simple commands and to walk on a lead. The puppy walker also takes it to busy town centres and on different kinds of public transport. The puppy is introduced to the sights, sounds and smells of a world in which it will play such an important part. So you can see that here, as I was reading the paragraph, I was underlining words which might show that training a guide dog takes a long time, or is a long process. Now sets out we can't have, because the question asks for one word, and that's two words. Sets wouldn't work on its own, and nor would out, so we can rule out what we've underlined here. Now journey would work, because if something is a journey, then it might take a long time. Life-changing does not work, because that's more about the effect that guide dogs can have. It's saying how guide dogs are very important, but it's not saying that training them takes a long time. A volunteer is the person who trains the guide dog. So the volunteers are important, but that doesn't show that training them is a long process. And teaches doesn't work either. 
If something is taught, it might be taught quickly. It doesn't necessarily show that it will take a long time to train them. And I underlined the word also because that emphasises that the volunteers have to teach the pups lots of different things, but it doesn't show that it takes a long time, just that they need to do lots of different things in order to train the guide dog. So the best option we have here is the word journey. So that's our answer for this question. Question 19. What do puppy walkers train the guide dogs to do? Give two examples. So we'll find our answer in this section of the text here, how guide dogs are trained. We can see from this paragraph that it goes to live with a volunteer puppy walker who teaches the pup to follow simple commands and to walk on a lead. So those are two things that the volunteer puppy walker trains the guide dog to do. So to answer this question, we can write follow simple commands and walk on a lead. There is another possible answer because if we read on, we can see the puppy walker also takes it to busy town centres and on different kinds of public transport. The puppy is introduced to the sights, sounds and smells of a world in which it will play such an important part. So the other thing the puppy walker does is to take it to busy town centres and on different kinds of public transport so that it can get used to the sights, sounds and smells. So we can write cope with or get used to different environments it will face, such as busy town centres or public transport. And the mark scheme says do not accept references to them not being frightened by sudden noises or nervous of crowds. Question 20. Look at the section headed How Guide Dogs Are Trained. Find and copy two groups of words that suggest guide dogs do a very special job. So we need to read the section and as we read it, we can underline any groups of words that we think might suggest guide dogs do a very special, so very important job. So let's have a look at the section, how guide dogs are trained. As we read, we might underline, have to be intelligent and good natured, a life changing guide dog, play such an important part, or be someone's eyes. But this first group of words doesn't say that they're important, it just says that guide dogs have to be intelligent and good natured. It's saying what the dogs have to be like, but it doesn't say that the job they do is very important. Whereas a life changing guide dog shows that they do a very special job, because they're life changing, they change someone's life. And play such an important part says that they're special as well, because they're very important. Be someone's eyes also shows that they do a special job, so to answer this question, we can write life changing, play such an important part, or be someone's eyes. So notice, if we have to write a group of words, we'll only need to write between two and six words, we won't need to write and we won't get the mark if we write a whole sentence. And another important point is that the words that we write have to be lifted exactly from the text, so we can't change what's written at all, we have to find and copy so we have to write the group of words exactly as they're written in the text. Question 21. Puppy walkers have mixed feelings when they give the puppy back for the next stage of its training. Explain why. So here it helps if we know that mixed feelings are what you have if you're feeling two different emotions at the same time. So, for example, if you're feeling both happy and sad. But even if you don't know that's what mixed feelings mean, you will still be able to get the mark for the question if you look at the clues. So first we can read the text and the sentence we've just read says, It can be hard 
for puppy walkers to say goodbye to a puppy, but they have the satisfaction of knowing they have helped to raise a dog who will one day be someone's eyes. So it can be hard for puppy walkers to say goodbye, so on the one hand they're feeling sad because they've got to know the dog and perhaps like or love the dog and now they're having to leave it behind, but they have the satisfaction of knowing they have helped to raise a dog who will one day be someone's eyes, so that means that they have the satisfaction, so they have the positive feeling that they've done something to help. Perhaps they feel proud of what the guide dog has achieved and know that it will go on to be something very important. So to answer this question, we need to write two different things. We need to explain both the pride or satisfaction or enjoyment of having trained a guide dog puppy, so the positive feelings, and the sadness, loss or reluctance they would feel on giving it back. And we need to spot that we have a two mark question, so that's another clue that we will need to explain two different things. We'll need to explain why they're happy, why they're feeling positive, and also why they're feeling sad. So for example, to get two marks on this question, we could write, they wouldn't want to say goodbye as they would have enjoyed training it, but they would be proud that they had helped to make it a good guide dog for the future. Or we could write, they are sad because the puppy that they have loved and cared for is leaving, but they have the satisfaction of knowing that they have helped a puppy on its way to become a guide dog. So the child who wrote this answer would get two marks because they've explained the mixed feelings. They've explained that they're sad and explained why, but also explained why they're satisfied or why they're feeling positive. And notice the word satisfaction is used in the text, so you can use words from the text to help you explain. Question 22. Look at the section headed Work and Play. How are guide dogs like normal dogs? So we need to explain how they're like, how they're similar to normal dogs. So let's look at the section Work and Play. Guide dogs work hard and there is no room for fun during the working day. If you see a guide dog, you should leave it alone so that it can concentrate on helping its owner. So here, they've not explained how it's similar or how it's like other dogs. They've explained that they work hard and there's no room for fun, but other dogs perhaps don't work hard and do have fun. And then this next sentence is just giving advice for what you should do if you see a guide dog. It's not explaining how they're similar to other dogs. However, if we read on, at the end of the day, however, a guide dog will play just like an ordinary pet. So that is saying how they're similar. They're not similar when they're working hard, but at the end of the day, they are similar because they will play just like an ordinary pet, so like an ordinary dog. So to get the mark for this question, we just need to refer to them playing. Question 23. Having a guide dog made Lucy feel more curious, thoughtful, independent, or careful. So we haven't read about Lucy yet, so we'll need to continue reading the text, but it helps for these vocabulary questions if we know what our options mean. So curious, if you are curious, it means you want to find out about new things. If you are thoughtful, that means you are kind and considerate towards other people. If you are independent, it means that you can do things by yourself. And if you are careful, you take care of things. So let's read the last section that we've not read yet, because we can see that that's a quote from guide dog owner Lucy talking about her guide dog. Before I got my guide dog Benji, I spent most of my time at home. Now I'm out and about almost every day. He has given me confidence. Now I can catch a bus into town, meet my friends and go shopping. 
I can go anywhere I want without thinking twice. So what Lucy is explaining here is that because she's got a guide dog, she's able to do more things. She can go into town, meet her friends, go shopping. So that means that Lucy has become more independent. It's not that she's more curious, not that she wants to find out about new things. It's not that she's more thoughtful, that she wants to care about others or is kinder or more considerate. The point of having the guide dog is that it means that she can do more things. She feels more independent. And the answer is not careful, because what Lucy is explaining is that she's now able to do things which she wouldn't have been able to do before because they might have been too dangerous. So we need to tick independent. Question 24. Look at the section headed Play Your Part. What is the purpose of this section? So the purpose is the reason why it's been written. So what is the purpose of this section means why is this section included? Why have they written it? Tick 1. To inform you about how to get pup dates. To persuade you to sponsor a guide dog. To explain how the money will be spent. Or to describe the pup's adventures. So let's read the section Play Your Part. If you sponsor a gorgeous little guide dog puppy, you play an important part in its amazing journey. It costs from only £1 a week and you get regular pup dates with photos as it grows up and news of all its adventures. So we need to think what is the purpose of this section? Why has it been written? Well, it's telling us about all the benefits of sponsoring a little guide dog puppy. It's telling us why we should do it. So, for this question, we need to tick to persuade you to sponsor a guide dog. If you are persuaded by something, it means your mind is changed so that you want to do it. And the way that they've persuaded us, or the way that they're trying to persuade us, is to emphasise all of the important things. So they've described the puppy as gorgeous. They've explained that we play an important part by helping it. They've said that it only costs from £1 a week, so it doesn't cost much money. And it says that we'll get regular pup dates. So that's another benefit of sponsoring a puppy. To inform you about how to get pup dates is wrong, because it doesn't say how you will get them, it just tells you that if you sponsor a puppy, you will get pup dates. It doesn't explain how the money will be spent, it just says how much it will cost you. And it doesn't describe the pup's adventures, that's not what the section does. The section does say that the pup dates will describe the pup's adventures, but that's not the purpose of the section. There's nothing in the section that describes the pup's adventures. So the purpose here is to persuade you to sponsor a guide dog, to make you want to do it. Question 25. Look at the section headed Play Your Part. Why is the word pup dates in inverted commas? So inverted commas are these things around the word. And to get the mark for this question, we need to spot that inverted commas are used because they really mean updates, but because the updates are about puppies, they've called them pup dates, so they've made a kind of joke. So we can write that it's a pun or a play on words. It's a sort of pun on updates, for example. Or we could write that it's an invented word. So pup dates is not a real word. So that's why they have these inverted commas around the word. But here, we need to be really careful. It doesn't ask, why does it use the word pup dates? The question asks, why is the word pup dates in inverted commas? So we do not accept answers that just explain the word without explaining why inverted commas are used. So we would not get the mark if we wrote, it means updates, but because it's about pups, they changed it to pup dates. 
that wouldn't get the mark because though that's explained why they've written the word pup dates, it doesn't explain why the word is written in inverted commas. So we need, can explain what they've done, but we need to explain that inverted commas are used because it's not a real word and it's a sort of pun or a sort of joke. Question 26. Draw lines to match the age of a guide dog to what it does at that age. We have one year old, eight weeks old, seven years old, and retires from being a guide dog, goes back to live in the guide dog centre, and is trained by a puppy walker. So now that we're getting to the last few questions in this section, we might need to look at the whole text, so might need to look not at the end but earlier on. And for this question, the answers we need are in this section here and the did you know section at the side. So we have, when it is eight weeks old, the puppy sets out on its journey to become a life-changing guide dog. It goes to live with a volunteer puppy walker who teaches the pup to follow simple commands and walk on a lead. Then in the next paragraph, we have, when the puppy is about a year old, it returns to the guide dog centre for the next part of its training. And if we read the did you know bullet points, we have the working life of a guide dog is six to seven years. So if we go back to the question, we know that at one year old, it goes back to live in the guide dog centre. At eight weeks old, it's trained by a volunteer puppy walker. And at seven years old, it retires from being a guide dog. And one thing you can do to help you with questions like this is text mark. So as you're reading the text, you can highlight things like ages or for other text, highlight years or dates or key events or key words. And that will help you when it comes to these summarized questions towards the end of the answer booklet. Question 27. Look at pages 6 and 7. Tick to show which statements about guide dogs are true and which are false. First, guide dogs need to be very focused and have excellent concentration skills. That's true because if we look to the text, the start is saying all of the different things guide dogs need to learn how to do. We know that guide dogs must know how to obey but also how not to obey commands from their owners. We know that they need to be focused in helping their owner cross the road. So there's lots of things we could find to show that this statement is true. Now, guide dogs must listen to the flow of traffic. We can remember that that was in this section here. But if we read carefully, we can see that the owner listens to the flow of traffic to judge when the light has changed and then gives the command forward. What the dog does is look if there are cars are coming, but it's the owner, not the dog, that listens to the flow of traffic. So this statement is false. Now, guide dogs are encouraged to have fun during the working day. That's false as well. If we look at the work and play section, it says guide dogs work hard and there is no room for fun during the working day. They can only play like an ordinary pet at the end of the day. The first guide dogs in the UK were trained in 1931. So what we can do here is scan the text looking for the year 1931 and then we can read the sentence that it's in to see if the statement is true. The first guide dogs in the UK were trained in 1931 by Rosamund Bond and Muriel Crook. So that statement is true. And finally, puppy walkers get to keep their puppies. If we remember the text in this section, it says that when the puppy is about a year old, it returns to the guide dog center. And it explains that it can be hard for puppy walkers to say goodbye to a puppy. So the puppy walkers have to say goodbye. They have to return the dog to the guide dog center. So this last statement is false. They do not get to keep their puppies. They have to return them. Question 28. 
draw lines to match each section to its main purpose. So we need to remember that the purpose is the reason why something is included, it's what it's trying to achieve. So we have the sections, guide dogs and their owners, work and play, did you know, and a quotation from Lucy. And the purpose of these sections is to list interesting facts, to give you a first-hand account, to explain what guide dogs have to learn, and to describe how guide dogs behave off-duty. So we need to match guide dogs and their owners to, to explain what guide dogs have to learn. If we look at the section titled Guide Dogs and Their Owners, it explains what guide dogs need to be able to do, the things that they need to learn. Work and play, the purpose is to describe how guide dogs behave off duty. So if we look at the section for work and play, it tells us what guide dogs do at the end of the day. Did you know is to list interesting facts about guide dogs. We can see that the Did You Know section contains bullet points and each bullet point gives us a different fact about guide dogs. So the quotation from Lucy is to give you a first-hand account. So a first-hand account uses first person to explain what it's like for the person involved. In the quotation from Lucy, she explains what it's like having a guide dog and how it's helped her.